Hi guys, it's uh, Jackie I'm from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine with Malaysian Ingredients Made Easy. Now this is a, a uh, one of a series of videos under this topic and it's done in partnership with the Malaysian Agriculture Office here in Sydney and they provided me with the ingredients and I give you suggestions on how to use them in your food preparation and in your cooking and today we are talking about Ikan bilis. Okay, ikan bilis is a Malaysian, well, it's dried anchovies, but we're very passionate about the Malaysian variety, okay? So, like uh, most Malaysians, if you know, if they travel back to Malaysia, they will actually try and stuff their luggage with ikan bilis brought home from Malaysia because we believe so much in the quality of Malaysian ikan bilis compared to ones from other countries. And I know I used to own a restaurant and I used to get the cheaper varieties and they don't match up by any stretch at all. But uh, nowadays, you can actually get a hold of Malaysian ikan bilis. Like, look at the size of this pack here, all right? So this is really good quality stuff. Um, I'm going to run through some suggestions on how to use this in your cooking. Some of them were by me and some were by my community, by my masters of Malaysian cuisine chefs. Uh, and some you would be familiar with if you're Malaysian or you eat a lot of Malaysian food. Uh, but others might be a little bit more, I guess, more creative, more outside the box. Okay, so stick around to find out what they are. Okay, so I'm going to go through my list here. I've got uh, a few notes and um, I'm going to just show them up on screen as I go through them, okay? So first of all, I'm actually Hakka Chinese, okay? If you're Hakka, you will know that Hakkas have a particular type of cuisine as to like all the ethnic groups. And in Malaysia, uh, as a kid growing up in a Hakka household, my first memory, my most dominant memory of ikan bilis is to eat it with something we Hakkas call Banne, okay, and what I soon I subsequently found out, the rest of the world I actually refer to as Hakka Panmi, okay, but it's Panne uh, to me. And what it is, they're these um, uh, wheat noodles, a handmade wheat noodles. Back in the day, they used to be pulled by hand and then cooked up in this broth, and the broth was actually made with ikan bilis soup, right? And the way you make the ikan bilis soup is that you would rinse the ikan bilis, right, in cold water, and then you would saute it with some oil and with lots of garlic and with some pepper and some seasoning, you know, just a bit of salt and then you will simmer it till it's very, very flavorful and then you will like make the noodles separately. Back in the day, we used to pull the noodles, stretch them out by hand. Uh, nowadays, I actually just use a, a pasta roller and then you cook up the noodles separately or in the soup itself. I prefer to do it separately and also have it with lots and lots of choy sum Chinese greens and serve it with lots and lots of like this chili garlic condiment and it's just absolutely beautiful it's like my number one Hakka dish my favorite Hakka well actually okay well it's one of my favorite Hakka dishes and um and it's made with ikan bilis and the other thing is also apart from the soup being made from the ikan bilis stock uh, it also gets usually topped up with some crispy ikan bilis as well, but I'll talk about that in um, a, a little bit down in this video, okay? So that's my first and predominant memory of ikan bilis and how we use that. Most Malaysians though would actually, once they think of ikan bilis, they associate it with what is arguably Malaysia's national dish, which is nasi lemak, okay? So nasi lemak for the uninitiated is uh, coconut rice and it's served with a number of condiments and some sambal and also crispy ikan bilis. And the ikan bilis, like I said, you know, uh, it can be crispy or it can be actually like braised with the sambal, but essentially like with nasi lemak, you can serve it with a number of like, you can change things up a little bit, but really if you're a Malaysian, you would think that nasi lemak is not nasi lemak without ikan bilis, okay? So it is crucial in that particular dish and all Malaysians, like I said, just like, you know, love nasi lemak for breakfast. Um, number three is to actually serve the ikan bilis, like to cook up the ikan bilis in nasi goreng, uh, nasi goreng kampung. It's very popular, it's just a kind of like a village style, Malay style fried rice. And they usually would cook it with some ikan bilis in it as well. And also uh, you can cook like ikan bilis, you can cook like fried vegetables or fried noodles and throw in some ikan bilis as well. Okay, so that gives it a really nice uh, flavor, flavorsome boost to whatever dish it is that you're cooking. Now, uh, I mentioned with Hakka Pan Mi that we would typically sprinkle some crispy ikan bilis on top as well. And the way you would make it is again, you would rinse the ikan bilis and then you would fry it in like maybe about an inch of oil or maybe a little bit more, but make sure you actually do it in a, in a wok or in a, uh, you know, something that has higher walls, okay? Because when you add ikan bilis, like wet ikan bilis, even though it's been kind of like patted dry, 
it will froth up quite a lot, right? So you want to make sure there's enough room between the oil level and the top of your pan or wok um, so that it doesn't actually overflow onto your stovetop and cause a kitchen disaster. But you fry it up briefly and then you take it out and then you drain it on paper towels. Once it cools, it will crisp up and then you store it in airtight containers and just use it generally to sprinkle on uh, soupy noodles, on like fried noodles, on salads or whatever, right? And it just gives a nice, beautiful, flavorsome, crispy texture to your meal. Okay, uh, and the other way you do it is um, to use it um, cooked up as a caramelized snack. And most Malaysians would know this, but may, they may not necessarily know how to make it themselves. And it's quite interesting because a few years ago, an Australian contacted me out of the blue online and said, look, um, I spent a few years as an expatriate in Malaysia and I ate this caramelized ikambulus and peanut snack. It was so nice, but I can't get it here and I don't know how to make it. Can you tell me? And in fact, it's actually quite easy to make. Like I said, most Malaysians don't thing to make it because you can get that sort of stuff quite easily you know in Malaysia um, but the way you would make it is you would actually caramelize some sugar right make sure it's caramelized and burnt a little bit right and then you add some sambal and you can make your own sambal or even better you can just grab a jar of Malaysian sambal make sure it's Malaysian from uh, you know your Asian grocery store add it in and mix it together cook it up till it's again caramelized and thickened and then you throw in some separately fried peanuts okay peanuts with the skin on preferably otherwise doesn't matter right but yeah separately separately deep fry some peanuts and fry up some ikan bilis till they're crispy so you want to throw in the peanuts throw in the crispy ikan bilis, toss it through and then let it cool and it will be crispy and delicious and sweet and spicy as well. All right, so give it a shot next time you uh, have some ikan bilis at home and some peanuts as well. Now, another way you can use it is just as a uh, stock powder, okay? Now, if you know me, you followed my cooking for quite a while, you know I am big on using chicken powder. It's kind of a bit of a running joke in my community. Uh, but you know, in fact, um, if I could get a hold of ikan bilis powder, which actually you can buy off the shelf in Malaysia, I would actually prefer that to a chicken powder, okay? But you know, you can also make your own. So you can get like this ikan bilis, throw it in a high powered blender or food processor and blitz it to a powder form. And then next time you're cooking, like it doesn't have to be like, you know, look, I use chicken powder in like most dishes, whether they're chicken dishes or otherwise, okay? You can do the same with the gumbelous powder, okay? Just use it as a stock boost, like a, a flavor boost to whatever soup or whatever, um, you know, uh, stew or curry or whatever it is that you're cooking next time and give it a shot, you know, or make a world of difference to your dish. Now, uh, another way you can use it, this was suggested by my uh, my chefs in Masters of Malaysian Cuisine, is you can use the uh, ikan bilis powder as a seasoning on hot chips or also on hot popcorn, all right? Hot buttered popcorn, throw in some, sprinkle some ikan bilis powder on it and use it in lieu of salt and it will be really, really flavorsome. But make sure the chips are hot and make sure your popcorn's hot before you sprinkle it on though, okay? so that the flavors really met, uh, blend together. And finally, uh, you want to cut down on salt, right? Ikan bilis powder would be a great salt replacement. So um, next time you want to use salt or whatever, try using some ikan bilis instead. It will just give it that nice rounded flavor, that umami flavor to your dish. And also it's got, the, you know, it's got protein and all that as well, all right? So just flavorsome, um, delicious and healthy salt replacement. So these are some of my suggestions off the top of my head with regards to ikan bilis and how can you can use it in your cooking. Make sure you sign up on the via the link on the screen that's coming up next and I will send you more tips and the occasional recipe as well if you're interested, okay? And I'll see you in my next video.